time you think a woman is out of your league, I want you to do this. Invest more in yourself. What is something that makes you feel awesome and confident? Go focus on that. All right, Blaine. So your premise is already flawed from the beginning. Um, if you believe as a man that you're out, that anybody's out of your league, any girl, then you've already lost. So that telling guys in a post that this concept is even a thing is already bad dating advice. So she is right. You need abundance mentality. You need to focus on things that are more important to you. But it takes more effort for a man to become attractive than for a girl to become attractive. So if you're attractive as a guy, there is no girl that is above you in league. She was just lucky, genetically lucky, to be in like to, to be pretty. For you to be attractive as a man, you you need to be a superior man. You need to be better than your competition. So because it requires much more effort on your part, there is no girl out there that's superior to you. And so there's no such thing as a league. Leagues only exist to facilitate um, basically um, useful idiots, right? So guys are like, oh my God, she's so out of my league. I'll never go for her. And that allows her to optimize her bedroom fund strategy, right? Which is to sleep with Ch with Chad. If you take yourself out of the running automatically, then it's clear to her that, that you're not Chad, right? So it's it's just stupid on all levels. So again, do you see the subtle brainwashing that's in the, the that's in the TikTok? I mean, sorry, in the YouTube short, there it is. Realize that what's holding you back is between your ears. If you believe she's out of your league, she is. Okay, but there is something wrong with what she's saying as well. And that's uh, the embedded body positivity movement, right? If you believe um, that you're below her, then you are. This is true. But she's not acknowledging reality, which is that there are men and there are men, right? If you are a man that works on yourself, that's superior, that's tall and strong and fit and confident and has a good job and basically is Chad, you're in the top 20%, then there is no such thing as a league for you. But... Um, like belief that you're good uh, or competitive as a man doesn't actually help you to actually succeed. So this advice is terrible again um, because you need to be competitive in order to be attractive as a man. And this advice of you're fine just the way you are, if you believe she's above you than she is, is terrible advice. You need to actively work and fight and struggle to be superior in order to be attractive to women. And she's lying when she says, when she implies that that's not the case. Remember that change takes time. So be patient with yourself. Again, she's just saying platitudes, right? Like this is worthless. All right, next. I want women to start taking you seriously. You have got to start communicating directly and confidently about what you want. Okay, so here's the thing. That she puts as the title, how to be boyfriend material. Again, like everything is from a girl's frame. Everything is from a girl's perspective. How can you be better for me, right? And if you fall into this frame of how can I be better for her, you've already lost. No, you work to be a competitive man and she has to prove to you why you should be in a relationship with her. It's not the other way around. We're not out here proving ourselves to girls and trying to convince them to be attracted to us. This idea of how to be boyfriend material is, is ridiculous. Again, it, it's teaching men to go into girls' frame. And if you go into girls' frame, they're not going to be attracted to you. That's just how it works. So don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot and follow this girl's advice. I want to take you on a date. No, this is terrible. Again, if you tell a girl, I want to take you on a date, this is the fastest way to make her not want to be with you. No. Girls in 2022 are not interested in being taken on dates. The only guys that go on dates are beta males, useful idiots. We're not out here labeling ourselves as a useful idiot from the start. It's not, I want to take you on a date. No. It's, let's hang out at X place at X time. We'll meet for a, and it's going to be a zero cost date. Where we're going to meet for a coffee. We're going to meet for a walk. Let's meet at the mall. We're not out here going on expensive first dates. We're not out here even taking girls on dates until they've earned boyfriend privileges. 
Hello and welcome to Helios Blog. My name is Helios here for another reaction video. If you're new to the channel, liking the content, hit the sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content. Just go to patreon.com slash the Helios Blog. Go there and subscribe to Nebula Tier. Again, it's patreon.com slash the Helios Blog. So no, this girl's advice is terrible. I want to see you again. No. Like, again... This advice, at best, only works for guys that women are actually attracted to, like in the top 20%, and at worst, actively hurts you, even if she is attracted to you. It's not, I want to see you again, or even better, oh, sorry, even worse would be, can I see you again? No. It's like, no. We're not out here texting, I want to see you again. This is a useless text. No. We're out here texting stuff like... So you go on the date, right? Let's say the, the first date is for uh, is to figure out if the girl is crazy or not, right? So you go on like a coffee date, you go on a you know a walk date, whatever. It's for an hour. You listen to her talk for about forty five minutes, and in this conversation, you ask leading questions. The idea is you're trying to determine is the girl crazy or not, right? Um, how many past boyfriends has she had? Uh, look at her. Does she have multiple tattoos? Does she have multiple piercings? Does she have a storied past? Um, do, does she seem like the type that would be loyal? Again, if you just listen to girls talk, they will reveal all the red flags, right? So red flags are high end count, um, you know, previously divorced, uh, you know, single mothers, uh, you know, this dyed hair, tattoos, all, all kinds of stuff. It does illicit substances, you know, had very sketchy stuff going on with her ex-boyfriend, ex-husband, whatever. All of this stuff, like after this first date, you can just politely excuse yourself. You didn't get involved in, in this girl's life because she's sketchy and you can just walk away with no issues at all. This is why I don't recommend you actually sleep with a girl on the first date because you could be inviting a lot of sketchiness into your life. So no, on the first date, we're determining if she's crazy. We're not doing this, I want to see you again stuff. After the date, two days later, you're going to text her and you're going to say, let's meet at X time at X place um, for X. And that's it. And if she doesn't reply, she's a time waster. We're not out here saying stuff like, I want to see you again. Um, I want to take you on a date. No, no. Advice is terrible, Blaine. Sorry. It's terrible. I want to do this thing with you. No. Again, we're not stating I want to do X because I want to do X implies you want her permission, which implies you're in her frame, which implies you're below her, which is starting on the wrong foot at the beginning of a relationship. No. We're doing this. Let's do this. See you at X. There's no... You're, in, you're already implying that she's agreeing and she's going with you. You, you aren't asking for permission. Stop being wishy-washy and start being direct. It's hilarious that she says this, but all of her examples are terrible, right? Again, it just shows how experienced dating by Blaine is. She's a terrible dating coach. Don't listen to her advice. Again, I swear this, this Blaine girl's tips are just like, um, what's it called? Counter counterterrorism. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like it's like that game, uh, Counter Strike. Like she's trying to um, create the the situation that you then have to defuse later. Like no, we're not out here creating problems for ourselves from the very first statement, from the very first uh, situation. It's a terrible idea. All right, next. Women are always attracted to guys with these three qualities: presence. No, that's actually not true. Have you ever heard of the statement, absence makes the heart grow fonder? If you're there all the time, if you're giving her nonstop attention, if you don't have your own life, you don't have your own hobbies, you don't have your own um, things that you do on the side, um, things that are important to you that are more important than her, she's not going to be attracted to you. In fact, she'll be totally repulsed. Uh, Blaine is just telling on herself here. She likes guys that aren't present, and so she's giving the advice to the future betas that she needs to save her from her bad decisions. She's telling them what to do in order to be better for her. But that's this is terrible advice again. No, presence is not what women are attracted to. Women are attracted to mystery. Women are attracted to success. Women are attracted to confidence. Women are attracted to uh, competitiveness. They're not attracted to presence. Um, you being there all the time. No, that's false. Terrible advice. It is so hot when a guy gives you his undivided attention. False. And look on any dating app, look on any dating show, uh, just look at your previous experiences with girls. Um, again, these girls do not give guys who give them their undivided attention the time of day. 
uh, that just labels you as a beta male and you're, you're likely to end up in the friend zone. No. At the beginning of the relationship, we're texting for uh, logistics only. We're not out here um, giving undivided attention, having thousand hour uh, texts, uh, conversations, going on $200 dinner dates and talking for six hours. No. Girls get boyfriend behaviors when they earn boyfriend behaviors. In 2022, there's too much sketchy stuff going on. There's too much usury going on. We're not out here giving this stuff away from the beginning. And in fact, women find it much more attractive um, when the guy is a guy worth chasing. And that's why they're always complaining about those guys. So no blame. This is terrible advice again. And actually listens to what you say. So again, what is Blaine doing? She's telling on herself. Uh, Chad A, Chad B, Chad C doesn't even listen to what she has to say. He just goes, uh huh, mm hmm, nods his head, and then they roll around in the sack for a bit and then he leaves. So, again, that's not undivided attention. Um, okay, number two, drive. Let's see. Drive. Women love ambitious guys who aren't afraid to dream big and pursue their goals. This is actually true. Uh, the only issue is this if a girl leads the date with saying, I love ambitious, driven guys, it's actually a red flag. What it says is she wants you to be her meal ticket. She's, she doesn't genuinely desire you. So look out for that red flag. Um, women are actually attracted to ambitious, competitive men. They are. But we're not leading with our wallet. We're not leading with our ambition. We're not leading with our competitiveness. No. Because once the girl knows that you're that kind of guy, she's going to hold back because she's going to want to string you along for as long as possible to try to get you to be her boyfriend and not her friends of benefits. So you as the man, you don't get the benefits that other guys have gotten before her. Instead, you get um, the girl that holds out on you because she's trying to get a long-term relationship and trying to show that she's not like other girls, quote unquote, even though she gave it away to, you know, uh, Chad at the phone party in Cancun. So no, we're not out here leading with this. Of course, women do find this attractive in the long term. Uh, but not for short-term mating. Just keep that in mind. Positivity. There it's really funny that she would say that women are attracted to positivity. But if you look at like these girls' dating profiles, don't waste my time, you know. And uh, you ask them about their dating history, and they'll tell you like, oh, I was with this toxic guy, toxic ex, uh, to a toxic, uh, uh, you know, a word, m word, all kinds of bad stuff. She'll just, you know, she'll complain incessantly about all this. And then they say they want positivity. No, again, Blaine is just telling on herself. She's been with guys that aren't positive. She's been with guys that don't give her good feelings all the time. And then she wants the new betas who she's trying to train. She wants them to be positive, you see? All right, let's look at this um, uh, article by The Rational Mail. The tool of ASD. This is apropos to what we're talking about here. Uh, I realize what I'm about to type here is going to ruffle a lot of feathers. But I believe the concept of ASD as game would define it as uh, flawed. I don't believe that ASD is what most guys make of it. I know it's going to go against anything any PUA has ever established about overcoming ASD, but let me clarify a few things about this first. By the way, ASD, for those of you listening uh, and not watching or reading whatever, so uh, ASD is, you know, when uh, you're trying to go for a girl and she says no and she kind of uh, pushes away coyly or whatever, that's ASD. So um, again, if the girl's giving you ASD, we're not out here pressing, right? Again, too much risk. Uh, it means the girl isn't genuinely desirous of you. Just move on to a new girl, okay? All right. I'm not proposing that women don't feel some sense of personal accountability for, a, for their own bedroom fund decisions. Obviously, it's their, in their own biological interest to be cautious with whom they'd mate with. What I'm saying is that AF, ASD is a feminine social convention. ASD is exactly that, a defense. It's an automatic moral high ground that any and every woman has the ability to, to claim. It's the feminine prerogative in its rawest form, but it's a social contrivance and possibly the single most useful tool a woman has next to her bedroom fun abilities uh, or her bedroom fun access giving abilities. It's one thing for a woman to be, um, you know, a bedroom fun oriented, arousing, erotic, enticing, but it's quite another thing for her to be available. This is the secret of feminine seduction, the prospect of bedroom fun pleasure without the promise of availability. And the tool, the social mechanism used to affect this contrivance of feminine virtue is ASD. There had to be a sociological schema created, a set of common rules backed by an unassailable moral stance that will allow a woman to operate and practice the methods of bedroom fund selection without the worry of the social accountability that are otherwise fickle and seemingly indecisive behaviors would draw attention to. Thus, the importance of feminine virtue comes into the popular consciousness. Disclaimer. Before I continue, bear in mind right now, I'm not debating the merit of a woman's wanting to avoid being considered a garden tool. 
Obviously, fidelity is a prime requisite for, uh, for men seeking to establish a monogamous relationship. What I'm proposing is that ASD is less about avoiding that perception and more about being a convenient tool to reserve a woman's bedroom fund selection options. I don't believe in ASD in the context that most PUAs seem to perceive it, and certainly not in the way most AFCs do. I do not believe women are as worried about their um, lady of the night status as most guys believe they are. Uh, bedroom fun reputation for women is no doubt important, but I think the social controversy of ASD is the way that men understand it is far more overblown than how women really experience it. Women are all too eager to reinforce this male perception because it serves that purpose as a whole. All right, let's go back to uh, dating by Blaine here. There is nothing more magnetic than a person who truly sees the glass half full and uplifts the people around them. Right, so this is just BS, right? Huh. She's like, Uplift me, do stuff for me, give me benefits, etc., etc. And obviously, this is this is bullshit. If you're the if you're the kind of guy that's doing this, there's no faster way to the friend zone. So no, blame your terrible advice. Okay, next. So my friend matched with this guy on Hinge, and she fully intended to go on a date with him until he did this thing. So I'm going to tell you what he did. Okay, so here's something that uh, a lot of women do. Okay, not all, but a lot. They do this thing called solipsism. So she's generalizing her friend's situation to the whole population, right? She's saying, my friend didn't like this, so don't do this because all women must not like this. That's not true. That Your friend doesn't represent all women. So your advice is terrible. Again, that's just a logical fantasy. It's, it's a solipsism. You're assuming that one data point can be generalized to the population and it can't. So you can avoid it. So Kate was at a work conference when they matched, and she's not someone who's obsessively checking her hinge. And when she logs back on, this is what he'd sent her. If he had messaged her one, maybe two times, she would have fully gone out with this guy. But now he looks desperate. This is absolutely true. This is not a lie. If you over text a girl, if you text her a million times to meet up, that is the fastest way to get the girl not to meet up. If you show overt interest in the girl, if you show obsessive interest if you show too much attention you're going to not meet up with the girl she's going to be totally repulsed by you and it's really funny that this girl would say in the last post in, in her last video that women value presence well this guy is too present and because he's too present he's unattractive you see what i'm saying so she already went against her own advice in her own posts so again terrible advice don't listen to girls like this they don't know what they're talking about and they will actively give you bad advice which serves to ruin you in the future don't listen okay and she is not interested don't do this true don't do it next men and women tend to communicate differently men true. gravitate towards report talk aka recounting facts and solving problems True. Report talk is essential in the workplace and great for creating intellectual connections, but not so much for sparking romance. Women, on the other hand, gravitate towards rapport talk. This is full. Okay. So here's what she's trying to do. She's trying to say, don't make it too intellectual. True. Don't make it too intellectual. But here's the thing. This is not what women are actually attracted to. Women are attracted to Chad, which means a man who is superior to other men. He's what other men want to be and what other women want to be with. So a man with options, a man who's tall, who's stronger than her, smarter than her, faster than her, uh, more skilled than her, more bedroom fun experience than her, etc., etc. In every possible trait you can imagine, that's what women um, are attracted to. So no, it's not the way that you talk. If you do intellectual talk but you're Chad, or if you do rapport talk and you're Chad, it doesn't matter. She's going to be attracted either way. You're going to be successful either way. It doesn't matter. What matters is being competitive. So again, this girl's advice is terrible. What she's trying to say is just talk to girls in the way they want to be talked to and you'll be successful. No, you won't because looks matter. And she isn't mentioning looks. She's just saying use, um, she's saying like pretty platitudes, right? Um, to try to misdirect you from the truth, right? But if you want to believe, uh, sorry, if, if you if you want to know what the truth is, just look at um, women's dating app selection, right? What what they select for on dating apps? They select for only f they, they only swipe right on four percent of men. Um, they find eighty percent of men as below average, um, etc. Right? So this clearly tells us that it's not about rapport talk. Like why? 
um, like, like what women are attracted to. So again, this is terrible advice. It isn't true. Don't listen to it. Okay, let's continue. Which is characterized by exploring interpersonal similarities and creating emotional connections. Right, so what is she saying? She's saying, be friends first, try to establish an emotional connection, all this kind of bull crap. And if you follow this advice, uh, you'll just be friend zoned, right? So, and again, it favors Blaine to give you this terrible advice because that's how women collect orbiters. They collect useful idiots who do, you know, who talk to them all day incessantly about garbage, who they never sleep with, but they get all the benefits from those guys of having a boyfriend without actually having a boyfriend, and then they can sleep with Chad on the side. So, no, we're not out here doing rapport talk or whatever. That's bullshit. It's not what women are attracted to. So, her dating advice is terrible, you see? It's just Blaine gives so much bad advice. It's easy uh, for, for me to refute all of this. Connections. So if you are struggling to communicate with women, create more rapport. Yeah, um, here's the thing. They say, like therapists say, the problem is communication. No, the problem is not communication in relationships. The problem is polarity. If there is a masculine feminine polarity in the relationship, the relationship will be healthy. So what I mean is the man does man things, the woman does woman things. If you as the man are talking in a girl way, you're going to wreck the polarity. If you wreck the polarity, there is no relationship. So no, we're not out here talking the girl way to get girls to like us more. It's like guys that become comedians thinking that it makes women attracted to them. It doesn't. Again, women are attracted to competitive men not to funny guys, quote-unquote. Women laugh at the tension created from attractive men talking to them, but it's not because the guy is funny, it's because the guy is attractive and he's creating tension and she sees him as being funny. She misattributes what she's actually attracted to. So no, this is also bullshit. Men and women... Next. Okay, guys, before I even click on this, it says how to impress a woman. We're not out here in the frame of trying to impress girls. No, they're trying to impress us. A man, in order to have a, like a relationship, has to be convinced every day to be in that relationship because relationships favor women so heavily. So uh, if the man is not being provided with benefits for being in the relationship, then there is no need for the relationship to continue. So we're not coming from the frame of how do I impress her? How do I get her to notice me? If she doesn't notice you, cool, keep working on yourself. If, she do if she's not impressed by what you have going on, cool, we're not trying to convince her. If the girl is not hell yes, she's a hell no from you. That's, that should be your attitude. Because any other attitude is terrible. Any other stance, any other positioning is terrible for you. All right, um, let's go to this uh, Reddit article here. Girl 20 female I've been, uh, I've been on a few dates with is unsure about whether or not she wants to go forward. Should I just end things now and stop wasting my time, energy, and money? Yes, you should. I thought we had good chemistry, but evidently she did not reciprocate these feelings because while she's normally a very bubbly texter, after our last date, she's been totally silent on the texting front. That means that she's turned off by you because you're probably too needy going for this rapport talk bullshit instead of just um, texting for logistics only. Um, when I confronted her about this, she said she didn't feel 100% into it and she needs the rest of today to decide. If the girl is deciding about you, that means you're not hell yes for her. If you're not hell yes for her, that's okay. Just move on to a girl who is. It's absolutely, totally pointless to waste your time going for girls that are not into you. It, it's a total waste of your time. And if you do it, you're going to be miserable. Because, again, like, what is the point of being with a person who doesn't even want to be with you? That you're just a placeholder for. We're not out here being butlers to girls. We're not out here taking girls on $200 dinners. We're not out here showing all these, uh, these girls like crazy amounts of attention if they haven't earned it. And when I say earned it, I mean six to eight months of consistent long-term good behavior. We don't, we don't give out boyfriend behaviors for free anymore. Guys, it's 2022. Ah, back to this guy. Well, I've always operated by the assumption that if it's not a hell yes, then it must be a hell no. Exactly. And I'm absolutely certain about what I want, but if she does not reciprocate the same interest, then needless to say, this makes me lose interest as well. Should I just text her back and make the decision to break off with her? No, you don't even have to. Just ghost. You don't owe her anything. She hasn't given you anything. She's a time waster. So don't waste your time. Let's look at the top comment. 232. Be with... Uh, upvotes. Be with someone that wants to be with you. Exactly. 41. If she was the least bit into you, uh, she would not have said what she said. Exactly. Uh, 126 upvotes. 
Well, if she's not excited about you now, she never will be. Even if she decides to go along with it, it's just going to be her trying to force it. Sorry, bud. Exactly. We're not out here, like, just giving our attention away for free. Looks like, it looks like the comments are full of guys that actually have a brain. That's wonderful. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, here's eight upwards. I would agree that after a first date with a girl, she texted me basically that I was a nice guy, but it just wasn't a match. That was over five years ago, and now, she, and now she's my wife, and we're happily married. Um, yeah, if she sees you as a nice guy at the beginning of the relationship, relationship's already dead. You're going to get divorced. Sorry. It's, it's not going to be a good time. We're not out here being the nice guy to girls. The guy who, I've had my fun and now I'm ready to settle down. You're the settle down guy. No, no, no. She is hell yes for you. Highly bedroom fun interested. Loves to, to touch you and be with you. And, um, see, and thinks of you as the best she's ever had. Or I'm not interested. And you shouldn't either. Again, if you're not a girl's top choice, you shouldn't be a girl's choice at all. You have other girls out there that are much more willing and much better choices than a girl that's not interested in you. And in fact, it'd be better for you to be with no one than a girl who just disdains you. All right, uh, 31. No, um, okay. Wow. Okay, the full story is a long-winded one. Here, fine, I'll read it. Can I get the full story? Neither of us was looking for anything more than a little fun, certainly not a long-term relationship, and marriage was just not in the realm of possibility, especially considering she's almost 20 years younger than me and had already been more married and swore never to marry again. Anyway, I was a, on a dating app and saw a profile, liked what I saw, so I swiped on the off chance she liked all the men, and as fate would have it, she swiped on me. So we matched. It's really surprising because I hadn't had much luck, a little texting here and there, but no actual dates. We went out to dinner, then back to my place, and we had our fun. We were watching a movie afterwards, and she commented it was one of her favorite movies growing up. I made a mental note of the movie. I dropped her off at like 4 a.m., and I think I was smitten. I bought the movie right then and there. It was only like $8 or something. And she texted me like a day or two later saying she didn't want to see me again. All right, so whatever. Take your fling and move on. That's great. Clearly, you weren't the top choice. She just wanted to be with you for a little bit of fun, and then she's going to move on to another chad. She's not ready to settle down, and we're not out here trying to convince girls that are garden tools to be housewives. All right, we're going to end the video there. Again, guys, if you're new to the channel, like in the content, hit the sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content. Just go to patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Subscribe to Nebula tier. Again, patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day, especially if, uh, especially if you took the time to listen to the whole video. I really do appreciate it, guys. And I will see you next time.